Okay, we are going to look at intercept form for a moment. Number one, what form is that in? That's standard form. This is where you have to do negative b over 2a to find the vertex and then you go from there. a still tells you everything that it ever told you before. Wide, narrow, up, down, all that stuff. It also tells you how to get from the vertex to the next point. Okay? Look at number two. Well, let's look at three. What form is that? That's vertex form. That's what we learned yesterday. So that is, remember the vertex you can get just by looking at it. It's the opposite of that number in there with the x, comma, that number on the outside. The number in the front here is your a value, which is all the same things that it always did. Up, down, wide, narrow, how to get from the vertex to the second and third point. However, if you look at something like number two, this doesn't quite look like one of the forms that we've looked at in the last two days, but this sure does look familiar, doesn't it? What does this look like? It's a quadratic that's been factored. That's all it is. So if I take a quadratic and I factor it, remember, when you solve a quadratic, Remember how you factored it and then you set each factor equal to zero and you got two answers, right? And what were those answers? What did they mean, those two numbers? It's where the parabola crosses the x-axis, right? So this quadratic has already been factored. Here's its two factors. It's telling you where it's crossing the x-axis. Once, now you gotta set each factor equal to zero, so it's actually going to be at negative three and at positive one. Do you see that? Do you remember solving quadratics? You would factor in and then set them equal to zero, right? So you'd be right here and then you'd set them both equal to zero and get negative three and a positive one. So that's what intercept form is telling you. It's giving you, not the vertex, but it's giving you the two x-intercepts. Isn't that neat? So, watch, and I know you're probably wondering, well, what's up with this negative out in front? Well, let me show you the general form of intercept form. Let's, uh, I'll stick it right here. So, intercept form just looks like this. Y equals A, X minus P times X minus Q. So that number out in front is still just A. It still tells me all the same things that I ever did before. Up, down, wide, narrow, how to get from the vertex to my next second and third points. So A and then P and Q are the x-intercepts. But again, since it's a minus in the formula, you're really looking for the opposite of what's there. So if we kind of tie this in with example number two. So I know the factor is x plus three, but that means that the solution that you get from that is negative three, right? Right? So it's gonna cross at negative three on the x-axis. So I put a dot at negative three on the x-axis. I put another dot at positive one the other place it's crossing the x-axis. Does that make sense so far? So I already have two of the five points that I need. I do still need to find the vertex though. Now, I'm not going to do negative b over 2a, because if you look, I don't even have a b in this, right? I can be smart about it. I may not know exactly where the vertex is, but I sure know something. Does anybody have an idea where the vertex must be? It has to be, right? Doesn't it have to be exactly halfway between these two points? I just don't know where, but I can find the x value if I just go halfway in between negative three and positive one. So, and a quick way to get halfway between them is to just take P and Q, add them together, and divide by two. So that gets you the X coordinate of your vertex. 
So that means negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So that means my vertex is at negative 1 comma something. How do you suppose I find where the something is? Plug it back in. It back in just like I always had to. So and if it was in standard form, I'd have to do negative b over 2a to get that number. I don't have to do that now. I just go halfway between the two points. All right, so now I just go ahead and plug in negative 1. Sometimes this trips kids up because there's two x's. You just plug negative in for both of them. That's all. So I'm going to do negative, negative 1 plus 3, negative 1 minus 1. So I would do what's in the parentheses first. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. Negative 1 times negative 1 is negative 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, but don't forget about this negative out in front. So I get out a positive 4. Did you? Does everybody agree with my math? Now I know where my vertex is. Negative 1, 4. I can still use my little trick, right? If A is negative 1, how would I get another point from my vertex? Where would I go? If you're thinking, oh, Mrs. Sabia, wouldn't you just go down 1 over 1? You're right. Down one to the right one. Buy one, get one free. There's five dots. That's enough. There's my beautiful parabola. Is it everything you thought it would be? It, I went halfway in between the two points, and I got negative one. Does that make sense? And then you just take negative one, and you plug it in and see what comes out. And when I did that, I got out a positive 4. And then to get these two points, I just followed the pattern given by A. You could have also plugged in values, but I'm lazy and I know the pattern, so I'm going to use it. So there it is. That's all there is to, to uh, intercept form. By the way, if you hate it, foil it back together and then do it in standard form. It's more work, but if you'd rather do it that way, you could. Um, so let's flip it over to number eight. What do you think that's, should I let you try it? Go ahead, give it a shot. Try and graph number eight. See if you can figure out where all the pieces go. I guess you don't. You don't have to, but it's a good idea to make sure that you could answer it for any of them. Okay, do so we have a graph? So where is this thing in number eight crossing the x-axis? 
at positive 2 and positive 6. So please make sure you put dots at positive 2 and positive 6, right? So I know it's crossing the x-axis there, which means that my vertex has to be halfway in between those two points, which is 4. So I know my vertex will be at 4 comma something. Does everybody agree with that? And do you all know where I got 4 from? It's just halfway in between those two points. So to figure out where it is, I just have to plug 4 into my original equation. So 4 minus 2 is 2. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So does everybody agree that the vertex is at 4, negative 4? Before I continue, it looks like my parabola is going to be up like a cup. Is that what I'm expecting? What's A? One. Positive 1, right? If there's no number in the front, it's just a positive 1. So it should be up like a cup, and it's not going to be particularly wide or narrow. So if I want to get another point from my vertex, where would I go? If, if A is positive 1, though, I want to go up 1 to the right one. Buy 1, get 1 free. And then isn't the pattern, right? When A is 1, isn't the pattern up 1, then up 3? Right? And look, doesn't it fit? Up 1, up 3. If you want to do another point, you can go up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 1. Buy 1, get 1 free. Look at that. Could you making these beautiful parabolas? So I might ask you the same questions tomorrow as I have for all the other parabolas. So let's just see if we could fill them out. You already told me it was up. This one, wide, narrow, or neither? Neither. I just followed the pattern. The pattern, when A is 1, you go up 1, up 3, up 5. Up 7 if you want to do another one. Then up 9. Then up 11. Then 13. Isn't that something? So cool. So the vertex was at 4, negative 4. Where's the axis of symmetry? Uh-huh. Max or min? What is the y-intercept? Yes. Oh, because you multiply. Mm-hmm. If I plugged in 0 for x, I'd get negative 2 times negative 6, which is a positive 12, which, according to my graph, looks like it's going to make sense, right? That's just going to keep going up. So, yes, yeah, some positive value. And then, gee, there's my graph. That's all there is to it. So you just got your two spots where it crosses the x-axis. Halfway in between has to be your vertex. And then I can follow my pattern of A, make my life so easy. What do you guys think? Good. Now, real quick, um, let's do one together. Which one do you prefer at the bottom? 9, 10, 11, 12? 12, I hear. All right. Well, here's, I'm going to give you some options for 10. This is in what form right now? Standard, right? There's nothing else for you to do. You could do negative b over 2a, or you can factor this, can't you? Yes. Really easily, right? If it was like if, I don't know, if I was trying number 9, Maybe I wouldn't even bother because it would take too long to factor it. I don't know. But this is so easy to factor. I could just take out an x. So we'd get y is less than x times x plus 4. Right? Right? If I just take out an x? You don't have to do it this way. I just think it's easier. Guys, look. Now it's in intercept form. If I set each of these equal to 0, isn't this thing going to cross the x-axis at 0 and at negative 4? Do you see that? So now, oh gosh, it's so easy. So it's going to cross at 0, and it's going to cross at negative 4, which means my vertex must be at negative 2 comma something. 
So I'll just plug in negative 2 and see where that something is. Negative 2 times 2, a negative 4. Negative 2, negative 4. Guys, what's the value of A? 1. So from that vertex, I can go up 1 over 1. Did you notice that this one was an inequality? Yes. So this is where you have to worry about solid or dotted and shading. No. Oh, it's your old favorite. Well, this one, without the bar underneath, is that a solid or a dotted line? Dotted. If it does not have the bar underneath, you make a dotted line for your parabola. I'm just confused as to how you're <coughs> Okay. Are you sure? Because when you factor it, right, if you set each of these factors equal to zero, won't one of them be a zero? Right? If you have x all by itself, that just means one of my answers is zero. You could, if you don't want to factor it, you could just deal with it right here and do negative b over 2a. And then just go through it like we have been. You're going to get the same exact graph. Now, I do have to shade. If y is less than, where would I shade? Mm, there's you, so you have two regions now. There's an above the parabola and a below the parabola. Yes, if y is less than, that means you shade underneath. So everything underneath the parabola would be shaded. Let's just, um, let's do number 9 also. All right, this thing is in standard form. I wouldn't bother factoring. I would just tackle it as it is. So how do you start when it's in standard form? Yeah, you have to do negative b over 2a. That's how I know where to start. I have to find the vertex using that formula. So that would be positive 12 over 4. So it's going to be at 3 comma something. Remember this? Then I take that 3 and I plug it back in and I figure out where I'm at. So that's 18 minus 36 plus 20. Uh... Two? Do you all agree? I took three and I... I'm not. Discriminant is B squared minus 4AC. This is the... Yeah. So to get the X coordinate of the vertex is negative B over 2A. That got me three, right? And then I take three and I plug it back in for X and I see what comes out. Right, right. Now, since I know that handy dandy trick about A, right, what's A this time? Two. So from this point, how do I get my next one? Up two over one. Buy one, get one free. I already have an answer for two, three, and four. So. Plug in 1 or 5. I'd plug in 1. Much easier. 2 minus 12 plus 20. Three. 10, right? 2 minus 12 is negative 10. Negative 10 plus 20 is a positive 10. So when I plugged in 1, I got out a 10. Buy 1, get 1 free. And then the only thing that I have to do different since this is an inequality is ask myself, dotted or solid this time? Solid. solid, right? If it has the bar underneath, it's solid. And I would shade where? Above. So above my parabola, above the line of the parabola, right, is all here. If you're ever not sure, you can always take a point that you shade it over and plug it in. And it better come out to be some true statement. If it's not, you shaded the wrong spot. Or your graph is totally wrong. So, that's it, guys. What do you think? No, it's not too bad. <laughs>